Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry I had to cut that video short. So just, you know, just so we have some clarity here, let me make sure. So I put in this, that's the remainder divided by your divisor, but really what should have, it should have just had that kind of attached on. So if I was writing that end answer, so I make sure we actually connect back to that, that would be minus five over uh, whatever my divisor was, 3x plus 2. So that would be that end quotient would be all of this. If you forget that remainder, your answer is incorrect. Okay, I've got a couple examples if you want to pause and um, test your metal, see how you're doing. Here's example one. I think there's one more example in here. An example two. So we're going to go ahead and move on to synthetic division. This is our fun part of dividing polynomials. And in fact, um, a lot of you are going to recognize this is kind of actually a cheating way, but you have to make sure that your divisor looks correct. And we'll talk more about that in class really quick. I just kind of want to set you up for how to do synthetic division. Okay, here's our formal definition. What is synthetic division? Here's a kind of a cheat sheet. So if you want to pause here and kind of look at it, see if you can figure this out. It's a good little visual aid. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look back at that original example. And this is what it kind of looks out all displayed, every part of it. Well, what happens when I suppress the variables? And what that means, what happens if I literally just take every variable out? Well, we actually have some numbers that we can kind of deal with. And instead of looking at it with all those X's in, well, numbers are a little easier to mess with. Well, in essence, that's what synthetic division does. It takes those values. It suppresses the variables. It takes all those values and plays, uh, and plays with them. And all we're really doing is seeing the division part that multiply, subtract, bring down, multiply, subtract, bring down. It's really all we're kind of looking at with synthetic division. So I've got some steps here. You're going to write the coefficients, um, write the related zero, multiply, blah, 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 blah. Now, these steps aren't going to help you until you actually see an example. So if you need to come back to this part, please do come back as many times as you need to. Or pause and take a video or pause and record it or whatever you got to do. But here's my first example. So the very first thing that I'm going to do, well, I'm going to get a pen. The very first thing is I'm going to put my divisor in here. So synthetic division has to have something that is in the format of what we call X minus C. It really has to be in that format. So what I would do right now on bottom, that is X minus C. And so we simply set it equal to zero and solve. And so that's what, the way we're looking at it. I know I'm just going to change the sign of that too. So what goes in here? Negative two. That's our very first uh, value. I'm going to use a different color since this is all black. Let's use, let's use a color that we will know is different right here. Let's put negative two. There we go. Then I'm going to take all of my coefficients. But before we can do those coefficients, I have to ask myself, do I have any placeholders? Just like we did in one of those long division examples. So I have x to the fourth x squared. Ooh, I already missed one. There's zero x to the cube. So I have to have x cubed a placeholder. If I put zero out front, then that's going to zero out that x. That means I have a placeholder. So four, three, two, one, zero. We're good to go. So I take these coefficients. So I write two. The next coefficient would be zero because it's a placeholder. Then negative five, then positive five, then negative two. Now all we are going to do, once I've put the correct number here, once I've placed all my coefficients, making sure to account for placeholders and in their from highest power to lowest power order, then all I'm going to do is drag this number down. So I'm bring that two down and I multiply right here. So two times negative two is negative four and I'm going to put that number right there. Then I add it down. Zero plus negative four is simply negative four. We multiply again. I take this number and I multiply. Negative four times negative two gives me eight. I put it in the new box. Then I add down. Eight plus negative five is positive three. I multiply back over here. Three times negative two is negative six. I add down five and negative six is negative one. I multiply, so negative 1 times negative 2 gives me a positive 2. If I add down negative 2 plus 2, this was an add. If I add down negative 2 plus 2, gives me 0. So that tells me that not only do I have, uh, not only did I just complete my division. I know it doesn't look like it to y'all. I'll show you in just a second. But not only did I complete my division, but I got real lucky, and it has a remainder of 0. If there is a real remainder to be left, this is where you will have that remainder in that last little box. Now I've put boxes on my screen. It does not necessarily mean you're going to have pages with boxes it's to kind of create that concept for yourself. So what do I do? How do I make this look like a polynomial? Well, I look at my highest degree. My highest degree up here is the number four. And then I take minus one. That's it. So I'm going to start with x cubed. So I bring this number down two x 
cubed. I bring this number down. Minus 4. What's the next one? X squared. I bring this number down. 3. What's the next kind of X? X to the first. I bring this number down. Minus 1. And there's X to the 0 with power. What's up, Mr. Kitty? Okay. So there is my end answer. So I know that 2X to the fourth is equal to... Remember, we bring that divisor in first, x plus 2. What I just scratched out comes here, times all of this down here, 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then what do we do? We factor, and then we set it equal to 0, and then we solve. And those that's our true end solve. But like I told you all right now in this video, I'm focusing on synthetic division. So I've got another example, and this one I kind of forgot to put the divisor, so that's not our example. I've got another example right here, so let's see what that looks like. First thing first, I start with the opposite of this. This is x minus c. I set it equal to 0. That becomes a positive 3. Then I look here, 3, 2, 1, 0. We're good to go. I don't even have to worry about a placeholder. So I bring down that coefficient, 4, negative 3, negative 1, and positive 8. Then I just begin my synthetic division. Drag it down multiply, which is 12, add here, which is 9, multiply, which is 18, add here, which is 17. I don't know what 17 times 3 is off the top of my head. Uh, so I'm going to do it. 17, 3, 21, 2, 5, 51. Sure. So 51 plus 8 gets me 59. So what does this tell me? It tells me I do have a remainder. So how are we going to write this example down? So this tells me that this is going to equal x minus 3, right? That's that on bottom, times this polynomial right here. So I started with x cubed. So this is going to become x squared, x, and nothing, and a remainder. That's what this is. So this becomes 4x squared plus 9x plus 17 plus my remainder of 59 divided by my divisor, which was x minus 3, x minus 3. That would be my end answer. I think I've got a couple examples in here for you to pause and test yourself out. So I've got one right here, and as you can see, I've kind of already got boxes set up trying to help you. And that's my one, that's what that was it. I gave you one example, my apologies. Okay, so I gave you one example, and I think that's the end, but I'm going to check what we got going on. Oh, right, let's connect back to our theorems. Our theorems are super simple, guys, okay? The remainder theorem literally tells me if I divide by a factor and I'm left with some value, that's the remainder. That's all the remainder theorem tells me. So if I want to actually use that, whoa, kind of helps that this giant blue dot is in here. If I want to actually use it, then we've got this question that we modeled right here. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to divide by that remainder number. So in this instance, we've got the 12th game, we divided by 12 and we got we did synthetic division by x x plus 12 so x negative 12 and we got it i've got another example here the 13th but as you can see i've got a giant blue dot so i guess we'll connect back to this in class since my animations are crazy right now i obviously didn't test them first the other theorem we really have to know is the factor theorem and this one simply tells you that if you divide everything away and you get a remainder of zero if you end with zero then that means that is a true factor of your polynomial don't those seem like pretty common sense statements? That's all we're saying when we say the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. The remainder theorem tells me if I'm left with a number, I have a real remainder. Obviously, y'all know that we play, we write it divided by the divisor. If we have no remainder, then that tells me whatever I divided by is a true factor of the polynomial. So those are our two main theorems. Um, I really hope you uh, understood long division and synthetic division from this video. If you didn't, I highly recommend that you Google it, you rewatch the video, you feel really comfortable with these two concepts so that I can add on in class. All right, thank you so much, and we'll see you for our next video.